Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring the Steer 7 a German battleship Gneisenau, a ship I haven't featured in a really, really long time. I can't remember if I've actually ever featured it. Probably back in maybe 2017 or something. It's been a long time anyway. Uh, it's a ship that has been largely unchanged ever since its release. It's kind of been the same ever since. And surprisingly, it's still pretty damn good at its role or at its niche. Before I start though, I want to thank you guys for all the support you guys have been giving me. I don't know what's been going on, but I've been gaining a ton of subs on YouTube. And I did request you guys follow me on Twitch, but a really surprising amount of people have taken the time to drop me a follow on Twitch. So I just wanted to give you a huge shout out. Thank you very much for all your support. Uh, it helps me a lot. And of course, if we do reach that 100k goal by Christmas, then we'll be able to have a really, really ridiculous giveaway. So thank you guys for taking the time to follow me on Twitch. And of course, the subscribing is always good because ultimately I do want to reach 100k on YouTube as well. Regardless, moving on. The first impression you probably get from these guns is, well, the dispersion doesn't really seem that good. In fact, you only have six of the guns and the dispersion is kind of iffy. And that's always been one of the downsides of the Gneisen out. Disper you only have six guns and you don't have a whole lot of dispersion to compensate for it. You don't have a whole lot of reload to compensate for it either. So <laughs> you're reloading pretty slow, but on the other hand, the penetration on these guns is actually really good. This is in fact the same 380mm 15 inch guns that you can find on the higher tier German BBs like the Bismarck or the Tirpitz. They are exactly the same guns. So you actually have really good basic gun for performance, meaning your penetration values are really good. They're not quite as good as like the likes of Nagato and Colorado with the bigger caliber guns, but it's far better than what the Brits have. The, far better than the Royal Navy's Nelson, uh, for example. So, in terms of penetration and shell velocity, these guns are really, really good. Um, the issue is, of course, well, <laughs> getting the guns to go where you're pointing. Another benefit that the Gneisena has is it has an excellent armor scheme. Um, it's, you can basically rush nose in, and even though you can maybe pen the upper parts of your nose, in general your armor protection is very strong. And this allows you to push into situations that other battleships might struggle to do. More importantly, you have a German turtle back which makes you practically impossible to Citadel. Uh, well, at long range it's possible, but close range it really isn't going to happen by any ship, basically. So obviously, having these hard-hitting but inaccurate guns and having this incredible armor is all signaling one special thing. And that is brawling. This Kirov is kind of napping. Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, does he think I'm not gonna shoot him? He's just snoozing in front of me. And for once, the guns actually go where I point. And now he wakes up and starts shooting back, but I've broken his engine. And by the time he realizes that he needs to damage con and start moving, I assume it's going to be too late. And another thing there is, of course, the torpedoes. Now, you might see me switch to the torpedoes a lot as I play the ship, even though the range on the torpedo damage comes, and he's going to start moving, but as I mentioned, he's not really doing this in time, and that was basically a free kill. Worst of all, that was our first kill, though. Uh, we've already lost three ships, and I only just clawed one back. You also have torpedoes, but they're only 6 km of range. The reason why I keep switching to the torpedoes, though, is that the tor torpedoes have a hidden feature that people don't often think to use, and that is it tells you the speed of the target ship. Are they slowing down? Are they accelerating? Um, it might be hard to tell based on the smokestack, but if you switch to torpedoes real fast, that white line indicator which shows where the ship is going is going to tell you if it's suddenly um, moving towards the ship, you know he's slowing down. If it's suddenly moving away from the ship, you know he's accelerating. It gives you information that aids you in landing these shots. So really questionable torps by a Mayoko friend here. But more importantly, this combination of hard-hitting guns, turtleback armor, torpedoes and just this durability not to mention it has pretty good secondaries as well means that this thing is obviously a brawler and what you want to be doing is looking for situations where you can push in and brawl right now this game looks like a disaster we're down eight ships versus 11 they have a soon to be b and c they are locking down the entire map i'm about to reset b and just barely keep it from being capped but we are down 145 to 820 uh, 524 points they are pushing up all our sides we are in trouble but 
I've found an opening to do what the Gneiser now does best. And that is the enemy team, they have pushed very aggressively. More importantly, I have seen the DDs on the minimap. I know that the DDs are not here lurking because torpedoes are actually a huge threat and something you need to be careful when you push in in the Gneiser now. Because you're good at everything else, but tanking torpedoes, well, there's no battleship that is really that good at it. So we know where the DDs are, we spot them on the minimap, we know there's no real crossfires, and we can finally do what we do best. Push in and make use of all of Gneisen our strengths. We're down 125 points to 500, 5 ships are dead on our team, but it's time to activate the Gneisen now. I charge in, I overmatch the nose, once again these guns are 380mm guns, so most tier 7 BBs have 25mm of armor, which means your guns overmatch his nose. I drop torps on both of the battleships as I charge it in, uh, getting a flood on the Normandy, I'm not sure if he's DC'd or if he's actually, I think he's actually waiting for the Mayoko because he was trying to take pot shots at him. My secondaries are starting fires on him, and luckily I don't get the kill on the on the cruiser. That was unfortunate because that would have been my double strike here. My fires and flooding burn to death the Normandy and it looks like the Mayoko finishes off the cruiser as well. So just like that we have secured a bunch of kills and an opening back into the map. My team is still very, very constrained in their spawn but I have found an opening to push through and we're absolutely going to use it. Another thing that I didn't mention with the ship though is that the Gneisai now is actually stupidly fast. Um, it, when I say stupidly fast, I mean 32 knots of speed. It's in fact the fastest battleship in the entire German battleship tree. Uh, if you slot a speed flag on it, you're as fast as the Iowa. Uh, from this point on, all the German battleships are going to be slower. So obviously this huge speed, especially at tier 7, and this tankiness and these torpedoes means that if you find a good time to push in, it's very, very hard to stop the Gneisen now, and it's very hard to deal with it as well. In fact, we managed to avoid by angling against the incoming shells, especially the Duke of York AP, we bounced most of it, and we managed to ignore, the, uh, ignore basically all the damage because of that. I'm um, angling in towards the torpedoes, of course, using my focus fire, what is it called, sector reinforcement, to shoot down the planes, and making sure that he doesn't get any resets in. It's very important to me to dodge all those torps so that I can get the cap. Because having this cap means that we're generating points from somewhere else, which gives me more maneuverability, more flexibility, more freedom on the map. I don't have to babysit to make sure that we don't run out of points. Uh, having this cap means we have some sort of points sticking out. So even if the, all the rest of my teammates die at this point, uh, this cap here will generate points and keep us in the game. Zara trying to finish him off, get this kill, because at this point, we, well, we already have three kills. We would have had four if we'd just gotten the cruiser, so this would already basically have been a crack and, and a double strike. I make sure I angle against the Synop. You see how much damage the Synop does, though. Uh, the Synop is a huge issue. If you have to want to fight the Synop, if you have to fight the Synop in the Gneiser now, you need to rush him down. The Bliska, I'm looking at a torpedo indicator. In fact, it looks like he's stationary. I think he's gotten stuck on the island. Now, I could technically waste time and go hunt him or deal with him or whatever and maybe get an additional kill but honestly I don't think we have time for that and it looks like I have a Mayoko behind me that's pushing towards the Bliska so I'm just gonna leave that problem for him he can go and deal with the DD I am gonna use Gneisen our speed for something else entirely and that's to go hunt down the carrier because the carrier has been spotted and he's nose in towards the uh, location I'm going and I've been seeing him launch his squads you can see him, he's even got a fighter plane up it just briefly showed on the minimap if you didn't notice it you can go back for a second and that fighter plane always rotates around the carrier so that said tells me the carrier is in fact still stuck behind that island and that's all the information I needed that brief glimpse on the minimap was all the information I needed it's time to go I keep my guns pointed to make sure the Bliska isn't trying some sneakiness, trying to rush and YOLO me, but it appears he has no plans to do so. He was in fact stuck, so we are going to turn our guns and go for the Ranger. Another thing worth noting is that there is in fact a battle going on uh, at the A capture point between the Mayoko and the Synop. So if I can just manage... Oh no, he's still stuck there. Okay. Uh, so if I can manage, I will also try to shoot the Mayoko on the way in. Also worth noting, the AA is actually quite good. Uh, the AA on the Gneiser now, now you won't be able to repel tier 8 planes the same way I'm repelling these tier 6 planes, but you are a pretty nasty target to go for, and most of the time, carriers don't want to go for you. 
Um, and if they're forced to, well, well, this guy is basically forced to because look at that speed. I'm blazing with 28 knots straight towards him. Look, I'm using the torpedo angles. I can tell the Mayoko is going full speed. So I'm actually going to take a pot shot at him as we go in. Speaking of AA, we just earned AA Defense Expert, shooting down so many planes in a battleship of all things. Mayoko looks like he's straightening it out, so we take a pot shot at him as we charge for the Ranger, because he's on the same side, so we want to have our guns turned this way regardless. Another six planes shot down. We keep making sure I keep my guns or my AA pointed towards uh, the planes or the sector reinforcement. I catch a Citadel on that Mayoko, so he's going to be very, very low because of that pot shot. A high caliber. And I know that this ranger, even if he tries to reverse, he has no way of getting out of this situation. It looks like the torpedo planes are still going to try to come in for a drop. But there is no way he's going to pull it off. And this ranger is in huge trouble. You don't outrun a Geniser now, especially not if your stuff knows in. There was actually a bit of a bump in the island that blocked my shells. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. He's toast and, well, he's trying to do some desperation moves. But there's nothing you can do about it. Worth noting here that um, I could have actually loaded HE. If I had loaded HE, I would have Citadel this Ranger more consistently. His Citadel is located under the smokestacks, which on the Ranger is uh, actually at the back of the ship. You see where I'm pointing? That's where his Citadel is. But I'm simply over-penetrating it. With HE, I would probably have had an easier time just Citadeling him. But regardless, my torpedoes finish the job. A devastating strike, and we get our Kraken. Sadly, we could have gotten it a bit sooner, but hey, we're not going to complain about getting a Kraken and clawing this game back from the brink of, well, defeat. We use our torpedo. You see you see how the torpedo, the white line, moved towards him? That tells me he's actually actively slowing down. You can see that? That's how it looks. He's actively slowing down. So I use my aim to shoot very close to him. Unfortunately, the dispersion lands right next to his nose and we don't get the kill. Still, though... I don't think he's got any chance of getting out of this situation. We're gonna switch to torpedoes again. You see the white line is moving away. We know he's accelerating. He's building up to full speed. So we're gonna take a significant lead this time. And this time he has no chance of dodging because I only really need an over penetration. But in classic World of Warships fa fashion, when all you need is a couple of over pens, the game gives you a citadel, as always. That is the sixth kill. Half the enemy team dead. And at this point, it's looking very slim that the, the enemy team will come away with a victory from this one. The concealment on the ship is pretty decent, 13.7. It used to be better before they, of course, nerfed Concealment Expert. I still like building Concealment, though, even though it might not be on the, on the smaller maps, it might not be quite as effective. Um, having the concealment build when you're up tiered is honestly quite nice because when you're facing tier 9s and you got things like Misashis taking pot shots at you across the map, it doesn't matter if you're fast, you are still a large battleship with an 830 meter turning circle and honestly a pretty garbage rudder shift. If they want to take shots at you, they will not have too many issues hitting you. So I like building concealment expert. You noted, know of course, because of all the HE spam that I was under and the carrier harassment, I also like building tank. I don't build for secondaries on, on the Gneisen now. I like the, using the main guns to do the talking. The main guns and the torpedoes. And most of the time, if you're trying to push in, they will put pressure on you. And surviving that pressure is important for the Gneisen now because, well, then you can't execute your thing, which is rolling. If you build, one of the biggest issues I have with most brawling builds is that the build is based on the idea that it's super effective once you have reached the brawling situation. But as anyone who plays this game knows, most of the time, the, the harder part in these brawling ships isn't the actual brawl. It's getting to that point with enough health intact to actually be useful. That's significantly harder than the actual brawling. And uh, finding the opening, finding the position, and surviving long enough is far, far more challenging. And for that reason alone, I like. I think that tank builds are actually more useful for brawling than any sort of secondary build. They just they give you the they give you the survivability to get to that point in the first place. Once you're at that point, well, then the torpedoes and the turtle back and all of that will do the work. Will do the work for you. This person, of course, really, really trying to deny me this synop kill. I am taking pot shots at him, but I mentioned before, these are German guns, infamously trolly and, well, infamously infuriating at time as well. But we are closing the distance, and at this point, because we took the cap earlier, 
we are about to overtake, to overtake them in points. So whereas if you hadn't had the points lead, if you hadn't, for example, taken B, they would probably have a significant point, points lead at this point, and they could just be running away. They only have. They only need to live like four minutes. They could just run to the border, run to the edge of the map. But because the points are ticking in our favor, they have no choice but to turn around and take this fight. And we finally secure the Sinop kill as well. And that is kill number seven. Obviously, at this point, I want to secure the Gneisen as well because that would put me at a pretty hilarious number of eight kills which is, of course, two-thirds of the entire enemy team. And this is in a game that, until that metal push, looked like an absolute guaranteed defeat. We were down less than 100 points. The enemy had, what, more than 500 points. It was, it, it was looking like a complete stomp. And in one push, the Gneisenau managed to turn that around. Enemy Gneisenau turns nose in. I don't want to be shooting a nose in Gneisenau. We're going to be patient here. Wait for him to give enough broadside. That should be our kill, but I don't trust these guns. I know how unreliable they are, and has expected we get two bounces. But luckily, I turn enough so that I can get my back turret off, and with that back turret shell, another overpen, we manage to secure kill number eight. I'm a bit sad that that cruiser didn't get deleted. He gave me a flat broadside, but once again, the guns probably just overpenned his citadel, so we didn't get our double strike and kill number nine. Still, though, I'm not gonna be complaining. 199,000 damage, 7 torpedo hits, 53 planes shot down, 8 cap resets, 86 secondary hits, 4 citadels, even 2 fires, those were from secondaries, obviously. Um, devastating strike, the AA defense, ribbon, confederate, kraken, and high caliber. Basically, all you can get in terms of damage, besides that double strike that I really, really would have wanted to have. Oh well, we're not gonna, obviously, not gonna complain. Team score-wise, well... <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, honestly. Uh, a guy in chat said uh, that he thinks this is like either fourth or top three highest Gneisenau base XP in the game, regardless of versions. And you, when you consider that Gneisenau has been in the game since... When was the Gneisenau added? I think it was added like back in... I can't even remember what patch. It's been around for a long time in the game and still managed to get this much. So obviously I'm very happy. Looking at the rest of the team, it is somewhat amusing with the rest of them sitting at around 1.4 or less and then a three po almost 3.6k base. The double strike and I think the cruiser kill would have pushed us to 3.7, which would have been even juicier. But hey, after a game like this, it would feel silly to complain too much. Detailed report-wise, 66 shells, 122k damage. Another 54k from the 7 torpedoes we landed. A bit of secondary damage as well. Honestly, a pretty respectable, almost 19k secondary damage. The fires did not much. Flooding didn't do much either. But even more amusing is, of course, almost 70,000 AA defense damage. That was a lot of planes we shredded, and that was not a happy ranger that tried to go for us. Potential damage, only 800k. But then again... We did enough work. I can survive with not having the highest potential damage this game. A hilarious match and a very enjoyable, at least my chat seemed to really enjoy this one and wanted me to make a YouTube vid as soon as possible after this match. Uh, let me show you guys my recommended build on the ship since I assume a lot of people will want to find out what I'm running. Alright, as usual, let me start with the modules. Upgrade wise, honestly, the hull. The hull is the absolute most important thing. It gives you maneuverability, which you desperately need because the default rudder shift is a nightmare. It gives you a huge amount of AA and it gives you additional health, a significant chunk. So yes, highly recommended, get the hull first. I would probably get the speed after because the difference between the speed upgrade is significant and more importantly, the stock range really isn't that bad. 17.8 is quite nice, especially since you have access to spotter plane as well. So get the range as the last option. Consumable wise, premium damage gone, premium heal in that order. And premium spotter plane if you can afford it. I run turret survival. I think you could technically run auxiliary survival, but I'm always a bit iffy about this second turret because ultimately it can be get blapped from every angle, and I hate losing turrets. I really hate losing, especially in a Gneisenau that is already so gun starved. 
additional tankiness, better dispersion on the main guns. Oh Jesus, this ship needs it so badly. And it has the bonus. The aiming system mod is actually especially powerful in the Gneisena because it also affects your torpedo tubes, traverse speed and your secondaries. All the things are things which you really really like having in brawls. And finally, additional tankiness. There is some option of running steering gears here. But in general, with all the HE spam in the game these days, I just like having the, the durability. Because the ship has fantastic armor, so you do end up shattering most of the HE coming your way. So, because of this, the biggest issue really is burning to death. And reducing fire damage by 15% is something I quite enjoy. Of course, showing the armor off on this thing. Tremendous nose. This is the part that can get overmatched, but in general the rest of the ship is just tremendously tanky and it has that classic German turtle back, which of course means that the shells might penetrate the outer layer, but then when they reach the actual citadel, they bounce off the sloped citadel and what they end up getting is a lot of penetration damage, but no, none of those devastating citadels, which you can obviously land on the enemy without issues. Captain perks wise, I like priority target, it lets me know my ships are uh, torpedoing me. Adrenaline rush, you don't actually need to go expert marksman first because the turret traverse is quite decent. So go adrenaline rush, superintendent, fire prevention. Once again, fires are the issue. After this, I like building concealment expert, get that expert marksman now. Get expert loader, yes you might have few guns and you might have secondaries, but being able to load HG on nosing ships or just uh, DDs can be highly useful. And finally, jack of all trades for faster consumable usage. Flag wise, we go full tankiness. Oh, I've actually run out of this flag on the press account. Still, though, uh, I like running India Yankee, Juliet Yankee. Okay, reduced fire, reduced flooding, increased healing, and increased speed. As I mentioned, the speed on this thing is really, really impressive at 33.6, so you do want to enhance it. Also, November Foxtrot, faster consumables. AA secondaries and of course if you can afford it you can run Juliet Charlie also since you do end up brawling it also opens up the opportunity for a lot of rams so Hotel Yankee aka the ramming flag is actually quite viable to run on the Gneiser now in fact uh, I would normally run it but since this thing is uh, what would take up the eighth slot anyway that was my Gneiser now commentary and build I hope you guys enjoyed it Thank you all for your continued support, especially lately the amount of guys that have been following me on Twitch has been insane. Thank you a lot for that. I'm really hoping I can make this huge giveaway for Christmas happen. Uh, I'm going to keep posting vids and I will see you guys the next time.